I would like to call to order the August 7th, 2018 Lake Mills City Council. Would you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mrs. Fritch? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. Mr. Fritch? Here. Ms. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Knippel? And Mr. Fields previously informed staff that he'd be unavailable for this evening's meeting. Okay. Item three, correction and or approval of the city council minutes of July 17th, 2018. I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. And seeing no other uh, people jumping up and down, we'll call the roll on that. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Correspondence. Anybody have anything that they'd like to mention at this time? Kind of a quiet week, sort of. Well, that's always good. All right, questions and public comment. Uh, the public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda. Public comment may also be made at this time on items that are not on the agenda if you have registered with the city clerk before the meeting has been called to order. The state's open meeting law discourages action by the council on items not listed on the agenda. Please keep your comments limited to three minutes and state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided on the podium. And it does not look like we have anyone who wants to speak at public comment. So I will close public comment. All right. City manager's report moved to you, Steve. Well, <laughs> we'll start with the items on the <coughs> city manager's report. Uh, <coughs> we transferred the uh, monthly budget by Excel spreadsheet, and whoever copied it to PDF did do the whole book. They just did the page. So you've got the revenue for the month <laughs> and not all the rest of the budget. Um, so will we get that next month then? You'll get a, a or, budget report for next month. That's up to date. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we'll we'll have figured that one out. Does uh, does anybody on the council want that sent to us by email? Is that necessary? No. Okay. But then don't worry about it till next month. The capital budget is in there in complete form. Okay. Thank you. Letting. The check registers there. The June treasurer's reports there. Um, the Mulberry encroachment report. I don't know if anybody cared about that. I do. It's we my really street. Have, <laughs> we really didn't have anything that was uh, a big deal. We had three encroachments, and we're just going to leave them all in place. I have a question. The first one on that report which is my next door neighbor. Um, is that by choice that they have said they want to just let the construction people deal with it? Or should I go talk to my neighbor? That would have been in a construction report that they sent, that they uh, provided. And, okay. Um, Maybe I can talk to you tomorrow about that or after the meeting, just yeah. to get specifics. I think that, that the way it reads really is, is as um, um, because the way they're done is it said that they were all going to stay in place. Removal by contractor landscaping. Yeah, that that yeah. one. And I'm, that, you know. Yeah, they'll they'll remove it and then they'll put it back. That's because there's no way you could do that construction there with that right up against the back mm -hmm. of the sidewalk. I'll talk to my neighbor 
to make sure everybody's on the same page there. Because uh, I think that p piece of gardening was there even before she bought the house. So maybe she, I don't know. I'll talk to her. All right. Okay. Um, I put in my registration for the EOC training. When is it? Uh, the 15th and the 16th. This month? This month. Yeah, okay. There are 30 people signed up. Ooh, is that okay? Uh, we had to ask three people to remove themselves so we could get all our employees in. Uh. They had opened it up before some of our people signed up, so I think we're okay. Okay. We kept two of our employees out that we would have had, Dave Ward and Mark Andre, because they'll be oil and chipping and doing the uh, pulverizing and overlay in that time period, and we need all the street employees out working, so they won't participate anyways. And then the letter on the Commons Park, that's kind of Steve's group, and uh, they're working on it. He stopped in last week and picked up some documents from me, so uh, they're moving forward with that. Uh, <clears throat> Did you get to speak with Steve about that letter when you talked to him, or was it just a passing of? He came in and sat down and we went over. He was looking for documents, particularly the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan and how it dealt with the Commons Park. Okay, and good, that's a good what, thing. See what they had done with that in comparison to what they were talking about at their committee meetings. Are they gonna discuss it again at the next parks meeting? Okay, well that's good. Good. Glad to hear that. Thank you for filling me in on that. I think uh, South Main Street, uh, I believe that it's all cleaned up, uh, except for a couple of asphalt patches, which will probably attack a minimal amount <clears throat> sometime later in the summer. Um, Mulberry Street is going to begin. It has. We've got a tree cut down. Did you? Big tree. North of my house. They're going to start construction on the electric, telephone, and cable probably next week. Mm -hmm. Will that interfere much with traffic? Uh, probably not. Um, they're probably going to... It depends. That's a, a relatively narrow street. Um, and they're working in the right-of-way primarily. But I'm sure they'll have pieces of equipment that will sit next to the edge of the street. Um, because they have boring equipment and probably water or the material that they add to the boring machine to make to lubricate it mm -hmm. um, those types of things so that <laughs> at least at every so often you'll find a piece of equipment that's probably and they'll they're going to dig from spot to spot so everywhere that the plans had showed a box transformer they'll probably come up and pull it up and then Get ready to set the boxes. How long can we expect that to uh, roughly last? Uh, a month, two months, three months? Two months probably. Depends. The underground will go first and then there's overhead. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not sure um, who's taking down the old po power lines. Um, but they're all the cable and telephone are all coming off, so we'll be relocating all that. Anything on that? I forgot. Okay. Um, like I said, the sometime in the middle of this month, the oil and chipping will start, which is being done by the county, um, and the paving or the pulverizing and overlaying or milling and overlaying depending on where um, will probably start about the same time that's being done by Payne and Dolan <clears throat> so if you see a lot of streets that are a little bit difficult to get through that's probably what's going on is the hope to have that completed before school starts well uh, Lakeside starts the 17th so we're definitely not going to be done by then um, what about some of the vast majority of the main ones will be done by the time the public school starts. Okay. Um, 
American Way, we have come to an agreement with uh, Riverwood Development, Paul Giusti, on the construction of American Way West. And so we'll probably get that started pretty soon. Um, we are not, I, I shouldn't say get it started, we should have the plans finalized here shortly. One of the big items that was holding us up was stormwater. Uh, we also have an agreement on the phasing of the rest of the development. And so we'll have that contract probably before you on the 21st, definitely by the first meeting in September. Um, but American Way, at least, and the first two phases of that development will probably be bid out about the same time Mulberry Street will be. We have several uh, new site plans coming in. We have uh, a couple for uh, the industrial park and um, one commercial one. Um, Mangan is the development up there at the end of Brewster is pretty much finished as far as we're concerned. Uh, they are just about ready to finish the pavement and the curve and gutter. Um, then their internal development, which we We'll make sure that they follow the site plans. Uh, but they have two buildings that are just about done. I think they have five building permits total right now, and they're thinking about pulling another three to four. Oh, really? Maybe five. Yeah, moving right along. Do they um, have an occupancy date in that first building to shoot for? Nothing official. Oh, okay. I, I heard. I heard that they, they were looking to have it um, by December 1st to January 1st. Oh, okay. So it's a ways off, yeah. Yeah. It looks more done than that. <laughs> so. North Shore Development will probably start middle of this month, a little later, maybe a little bit later. As with all contractors, they're busy like you cannot believe. So being able to get them in and get things going, especially with the way the weather's been, has been difficult. But North Shore is that development on um, the County Highway B in the town on that little narrow lot that runs through and then there's a bunch of land in that back up against the interstate mm -hmm. just east of um, weren't North there, Shore. Weren't there issues that the township had to deal with on that one? Yes, and they, they've taken care of those. Or oh, they have. At least to their satisfaction. So. Okay. And we have pretty much everything we wanted. Okay. Um, TID number seven is moving forward pretty fast. It will be at the next, the joint review board is on the 14th and the first presentation uh, that we'll see is at the plan commission at the end of this month. Okay. And with the hopes of having all the stuff done by the end of September so that we have the October 1st deadline date. Uh, we do have annexation submissions for all the Styles properties. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay. the lead service lateral reporting. Um, we were supposed to have it all done July thirty-first. We were about sixty-three percent done. Uh, we submitted our report. We had originally asked for an extension, they did not grant it, and we haven't heard anything since. So I guess we'll wait and see what happens, but uh, it, it moved along pretty well. We're pretty satisfied with how it, we got to that point. Um, the radium, uh, they've already been in the well and uh, prepared it to pull the pumps. We're looking for a place to dump a 1,000 gallons of water a minute. Uh, so you'll probably see Franklin Street closed off for a while and we'll dump it into a storm manhole in, in the far north east side of uh, Memorial Park. Um, so if anybody asks, they're testing the wells. Okay. Uh, the meters, the new automated meters, we're still not putting them in, but we're getting close. Uh, we did a little complaining and the comment to us was, is, well, you're the furthest along of anybody. So 
I don't know if that made us feel good or not. Um, it makes you wonder about everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had done our cross-connection requirements. We'd sent out those letters, um, what about March? And uh, there's, they've been flowing in moderately. Um, we haven't sent out the multifamily ones yet. We're going to try and get that done this month. And then we're going to follow up with a you're running out of time letter in September. Okay. Um, because they need to be done this fall for our agreement with the DNR. Um, corrosion control. Um, the first time I've ever heard of lead pipe harvesting. Have you ever heard of that? It's the first time today. Is um, there a market for selling them? Well, <laughs> what we have like to do is, is create, we have to simulate a situation similar to what's in the ground to test our corrosion control. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out a bunch of lead service laterals. Well, we've been pulling them out and crimping them off and rolling them up and storing them down at the light and water building to use um, when we get ready to um, do this testing where you, we're going to have to fill them up with water and then pump the city water through it on a regular basis and then test the amount of, of uh, phosphates that's settling out on the lead pipe. Uh, well, we got noticed today we have to cut it in 30 foot sections. We cut it, we cannot crimp it. We have to make sure that uh, we stick wet sponges in each end, then put a plastic bag over it and tape it. And then we have to store them flat, we can't roll them up. And so then when we've harvested enough of these pipes, then we're going to be able to start doing our coupon sampling. So, and then we have to build a coupon sampling machine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. And that's all to take and handle the lead. It's to, to, to assess the lead, isn't it? It's to assess the effect of the effectiveness of the orthophosphate that we're injecting into the water to reduce the corrosion of the lead into the water. What's supposed to happen is that phosphate is supposed to line the lead and keep it separate from the water and so that the lead won't corrode into the water. And we've been using, a, what, a 70-30 mix. Um, and so we're going to probably sample several different types from different wells. And, and so we need all these samples, coupons is what they're called, that we sample and then we can provide the data that says, uh, here's what we've done. And I don't know, we figured that there was um, one liter of water in every seven feet. So we're going to need, was that 30 feet total or was that? I think the entire system was 30 feet. Okay. And was it supposed to come in seven foot sections? Originally they were talking seven foot sections, right. but this time they were talking 30, 30 foot, foot sections. sections. So then it couldn't be the entire system. Made yeah. Maybe so each run or something like that. We're still working through it. Mm -hmm. We'll figure it out. Um, our water rate is before the PSC. Betsy has been working diligently to try and overcome all the issues. They are now aggressively searching for better data, like everybody else in the world. And they went back to 1998 for data, yeah. which, and we don't have very good data in that time period. There's not a lot of information we're required to keep. Data about what? Um, they're looking at our financials. They want our financial data? Well, we've oh, already they, they reported it. They go through our it. financials with a fine tooth comb. Right. So our, our previous PSC reports did have all of our financial information in it, but they're looking to um, have more detail on what happened then with certain projects, and I just didn't have the information as readily available as I would if it were a more recent project. 
thing I had to dig it out. I, I did my best. But they're also looking for a lot of other data. I mean, they, right. they're looking There's for stuff that we've never collected before. Like Right. They're, they're changing the requirements. They want to know the type of material out of every water service in the city. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, technically, yeah. we'll, we'll end up finding that out because of the work that we're doing with, right. with the lead lateral services. But if we were a city that didn't have any issues, we wouldn't have any clue because nobody kept those kind of records historically. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, it's a, they're moving into a much more, and that wasn't the only piece of data. They're, like they're the age of the mains? Yeah, they want to know how all old all the mains that, are? And you know, we know we have some old mains out there. I was going to say, let's just tell them very old mains. Right. Yeah, that doesn't go over. <laughs> no, they Older want to know than if all it's of 1920s, the 1930s, 1940s. They want it categorized like that. Mm -hmm. And how much of it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thank you for all your work, Betsy. Sorry. We, uh, we found a large water leak on Grove Street. I don't know if anybody else is really down there tearing it up. There was, a, I knew about that one. Uh, a very large water, so we've been, one of the issues that they wanted to deal with at PSC was water loss. So we had to provide a plan to deal with water loss. Pretty much what we were already doing, we just had to document it. Um, How bad was the leak? Uh, we don't know yet, but it's estimated to be about 40,000 gallons a day. Well, that'll help to get that stopped. Yep, and we completed our water audit, and um, we're looking at probably having our water rate in place in September. Hope so. so only, Hope so. only three months behind. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. um, we've been doing EOC updates, emergency operations centers. We have three of them. One in the fire department, one here, and one in light and water. Okay. Um, none of them have been brought up to date since they were constructed. Light and water is relatively new, but it really only dealt with public works. Um, so we're looking at bringing both the fire department and the city's EOC up to digital instead of analog, putting in all the new channels. And was the light and water brought up to date when the building was built? For the light and water and the streets. Yeah, that's what they I mean. They didn't really do the rest of us. No, no, but I mean for that part. So we need to add that part to theirs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, at that point in time, we weren't really looking at using them, but um, the fire department and the city are so close together that we thought, Maybe a third one would be important because mm -hmm. redundancy is key to that type of issue. We are having a training class. I told you that already. Uh, we've been notified about union negotiations. Um, we should have an agreement with Riverwood. Um, we have several industrial park lots that we're dealing um, with sales on. Uh, we've been dealing pretty heavily with um, health insurance. I think uh, you'll probably see the new proposal for health insurance at your next council meeting. Um, Will the changes at the state level on health insurance affect us at the city? Um, I think we're going to make a total switch out of the state program. Okay. We have a requirement for Board of Review nominations. And um, we're actually starting to get the data from the state for the budget year, so the numbers are starting to come together. Will you be bringing a comparison between the state program and what you're looking at so that the council can uh, compare apples to apples and make the decision whether or not to switch? Um, yes and no. And by that, I mean, right now, we have what we currently have, mm -hmm. which is not in apples. Um, we're trying to look and see what the state has that would be similar to what we have now and do an apples to apples that way. Um, but the advantage that we have, even if the state were close, is, is that 
um, you don't have any state requirements on who, how much can be paid by the municipality. Once you're out, the municipality can design their own program. Mm. And so that, that was something that we were looking at closely as being a benefit to how we would design it. But yes, we will try and put something together. We have talked about that already. Okay. Any other questions? <sighs> I'm tired just thinking about it. <laughs> Will there be, I gather then that there's a significant increase coming in or possibly coming in health insurance? Um, I would say significant. I would say above normal, probably seven to eight um, percent. The advantage is, is that this one is substantially lower. Uh, it takes a little bit more of a design capacity to make it work. Um, but we'll bring that to you at the next meeting so that you get a better feel for what's going on. Lower than what? Well, right now we, we're projecting about $1,900 a month for state, the state health plan with the type of insurance that we currently have. Um, I don't know how that'll fall out because we get, a, we get into tiers and there are several insurance companies that are in that tier and then you get the average okay. of the ones that are in your tier and then you pay 88% of that. So then the city share might be it could be all of it, or it could be none of, or uh, you know, eighty. It could be eighty-eight percent of it. It's going to be somewhere in between. Um, so it's pretty complicated. Well, yeah, and then it depends on which insurance the employee picks. You know, mm -hmm. they have the option of picking like four different insurance types. Sometimes they they actually go out of our tier and into another one, and they pick and depends on what the cost of that one is um, and then that determines what our and then we take that times the number of employees who are taking health insurance and that's our cost mm -hmm. it's generally I think it's been about a million dollars a year okay. um, and so anything that comes in under that million dollars is has some advantages and um, so we've been evaluating that, and I think that we're, we also were very picky about, we, we have a very good insurance plan here. And so we wanted to keep it as close to that as possible. And um, I think that with the proposals that we've put together, <coughs> we will be pretty much in the same category. Um, for roughly fifteen hundred dollars, sixteen hundred dollars a month. Um, it depends, though, because there's an HMO plan and a PPO plan, um, and then there's the HSA. And while the HSA is <clears throat> pretty basic, covers it's easy to work with. It's just basically a credit card. Um, it does take a little bit more planning on the employee's part to understand where they fall and how it how it applies. They'll probably understand more about their health insurance next year than they did this year. Right now, you, you know what's paid for. That's all you know. Okay. Any other questions for Steve? All right, if not, we'll move on on the agenda uh, to the acceptance of minutes of the Parks Board meeting of April 18th, 2018. Um, just want to mention that those minutes include a lot of really good information that was included in addition to the minutes themselves that uh, I think is worthwhile studying as a council person. Otherwise, that, that will be um, put on. Uh, oh, what's the word? File. 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 
on file. Yep, there we go. Put that on file, but it is a very uh, comprehensive um, document. So, moving to item eight, council business, a tavern <coughs> operators licenses. Would you read those names, please? Christine Raylene, Gregory Carpenter, Riley Powell, Cassandra Potts, and Lauren Kopp. Okay, I would entertain a motion to approve those persons for tavern operator's licenses. So moved. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Would you call the roll please? Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4-0. Okay, thank you. Item B, discussion on the Code Compliance Loan Rock Lake Activity Center. This is a discussion only item, no action being taken at tonight's meeting. Uh, I think I bounce this back to Steve again, would I say? Yeah, that's probably uh, a good place to start. Um, I put together the Compliance Loan Program um, on your direction. I think I've come up with a pretty good proposal that puts us in a, a good spot from a legal position and, and that type of stuff. The, um, the Rock Lake Activity Center has filled out an application and submitted it and provided all the information that we are looking for, which you've been provided. Um, we laid out the conditions that we would like to see on the loan. They have in there how much it's between what 150 and $399,000. We would like them to narrow that down. Um, prefer to keep it under $200,000. Um, and that we would use the same legal firm that did the revolving loan funds for us to finalize the loan documents and have it ready for the next council meeting if that's your desire to continue forward with this. Okay. Would it be prudent for us to um, delay for an extra council meeting so that we could have a closed session to talk about the, the specifics of the loan documents before they're finalized? I, that's up to you guys. I'm fine with that. Um, it's, you know, what you want to converse on and how fast you want to move. I know, you know the last time we talked about it was um, getting the work done yet this fall. On, and the tight timeline, but you guys have to feel comfortable with what you want to do. So, how much would uh, that put us back if we were to approve it and try and get any of the work done? If we had a special, I can't answer that question, Doug. Well, what we could do is we could do is a closed session meeting like at 6:15. Well, what I'm thinking is there may be aspects of the loan program that we want to make sure are nailed down into the documents that we've talked about in general, very general broad brush strokes, that when we get down to the nitty gritty of the specifics, we may want to talk about a little bit more closely. I'm not saying we're not gonna do it. I'm just saying so that we're sure that all the documents reflect what everybody thinks we want to do. <clears throat> Let's schedule an early executive session yeah, and then if we have something we can we can just table it at that meeting and, and move on uh, and come back to it the next meeting we'll have that uh, lawyer here do you know i'll definitely have documents to review um by the end of the week i believe and if we need someone to come in we can schedule that i'm sure do you remember what her name is i can't right now i had it written Betsy. laura callen that's laura callen uh, so, uh, okay. Yeah. She she did all our RL F ones. So I'm, I'm hoping she'll. She felt relatively competent. She could take care of this. The conditions that you're looking at is like we've been talking. Uh, a five year loan with zero interest, deferred payments, the mortgage. Um, we get a second mortgage. Um, Do we know what the building is worth? as it relates to what's owed on it. And my concern is 
if something goes wrong, do, how how well are we protected if there's already a mortgage that might exceed the value when, once we put in the improvements that we might not be protected? Yeah, I, I understand the question and that was a debate that we had when we decided to move to the loan form um, because uh, my initial reaction was is that any improvements that we put in, if we do buy the building, we're going to we're pretty much going to lose because we're going to remove it all and start over again. Mm -hmm. um, and so the I guess the debate came down is this is more of a guarantee that we get the first shot at the apple. Um, is there going to be a guarantee that the um, nonprofit will continue for the? length of the loan to work? No. No, there's no guarantee. I don't I don't think that we were looking at that. We hope that happens, but if for some reason they don't survive, what we are looking at is we'll have a second. Uh, probably the first would be highly willing to move the building, uh, giving us a chance to buy the building. If we decide we don't want the building, then we're pretty much, I believe we're pretty much out. And that's kind of the condition we were looking at the second we decided to do the loan. I think we've captured more here with the way we've designed this loan now than we originally had discussed in the in the meeting where we talked about this. Um, okay. But you know we can evaluate it again. I mean that's I I felt that we had gone above and beyond trying to capture the ability to protect ourselves as far as we could go. Um, but. This is a, in my mind, this is a five-year stopgap. And it gives us five years where we can determine where we want to go. And we keep this in operation, and we have the option of being able to at least capture the building for ourselves. Um, I would just like to comment that this arrangement is very similar to the ones that the Economic Development Commission considered over the years when we did loans to businesses because we were never the initial loan back person. We would have, we almost always, uh, we were most often third in line. Uh, the bank would be first and then there usually was somebody else a second and then we came in which really kind of meant that we weren't gonna get our money back is kind of mm -hmm. how those were set up. It, those are revolving loan funds. That's what those were called. And this um, is similar. They're set up under the state guidelines. Right. Um, generally, we had a personal guarantee. Um, I think we lost money on two of them. Um, most of them, we made, we did very yeah. well on. Well, and we hope the same is true here. Right. I think. I think under any situation that's designed in this by this loan, we're probably not going to get most of our money back out of it. Either way. But it is, I guess my point was, is that this isn't the first time the city has engaged in that kind of activity. We've done it before to help businesses. And sometimes they've been successful and sometimes they haven't. And I, I guess I personal, personally see this as a business and you know that we're kind of helping and helping ourselves in the same time so that's I, I structured it different than that I looked at it as a nonprofit but a nonprofit that was important in, in that it brought people to the downtown area and, and generated traffic similar to us keeping our um, fire department and our library and our municipal building downtown and it's important to to the downtown area mm -hmm. I figured that was the main goal here and then keeping the nonprofit functioning uh, in the interim until we can make a decision is very important so those were those are more the goals I was looking at accomplishing than I was saving our money I have a question. Would a 615 special me special closed session give us enough time, do you think, before the next council meeting? Or do you think we need to be earlier? Um, I, I would think so. What do you think, Vicki? I would think even 630, you know, <laughs> that we'll have the documents ahead of time. Yeah. 
We will okay. have read them. It's just to answer any questions we might still have. I would think half okay. hour. Six, six thirty. Yeah. Okay, so when we get down to item recommendations for future agendas, we can put that on there at that point. And then we could take the item at the regular meeting at the next meeting. Now, uh, can I just, I just want to check, are you okay with what we just said? Or do you need to, did you want to speak? It's sound okay to you all? Yeah. Okay. All right. uh, we just, and thank you very much for coming tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, we've already put in money and time by people in the city, the staff, our public people, um, to research all of this, and you know. Yeah, and I wasn't raising questions about should we or shouldn't we do it. I just want to make sure that the documents are addressing all the possible concerns. It's the what could go wrong thing that needs to be addressed. And maybe it will be. I, I kind of hope between Dan and, and uh, uh, Ms. Callahan uh, that we can get that kind of worked out. That was my hope. Um, obviously, there are things that can, I'm sure she'll have some questions for us. And, and maybe those are things we need to answer at that point in time. Um, and then we can see if we're comfortable, if we can fill in it at that point in time, or just, you know, we can wait another meeting. But at least we've uh, put together something that gives us the opportunity to get in as fast as possible. But if we need to, we can always hold off another meeting and make sure the documents are as clean as possible. Well, hopefully that we can do it the way we just said. And unless there's something that is, you know, jumps out at us and we go, holy cow, we forgot. You know, then that, you know, that's how life is. But this is... It's not a new concept, no. but the way we've structured it, it's kind of new. Um, and well, it isn't every day you have a, something like this with a nonprofit. A yeah, lot well, of times, ours have been with regular businesses, which is a little different, but that's, I think, isn't that the major difference? Um, well, normally you're looking at it as getting your money back, guaranteeing that you get your money back. This one is kind of, I don't know that that's the main guarantee that we're getting out of this. <laughs> the, um, um, but I still, you know, Dan's got a good real estate background, uh, but I, I still wanted him to work with, uh, it's Laura, right? Laura Callahan? That sounds right. Um, Laura Callahan. To uh, go through it, because the more ideas you get and the more background you have into these types of loans and real estate, the better it should develop. And so I was hoping that we could get that done and be ready for you at that point in time. Um, I, want, I want it to be, I want to get this done with it under the direction that you gave me, but I also want to put the city in the best position possible. Yeah, definitely, that's your job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's our job as well. And our hope is that by doing that, we can also provide you with the stability that you need to be able to provide your programming. And a lot of people in town are hoping that we are successful here. So, next meeting. Next meeting. Next meeting, okay. Item C, discussion decision on acceptance of donation from the can bandstand. I, can I back up a minute? Oh, wait a minute. Are you comfortable with us putting on the next agenda? Do you want to make a motion to that effect? Or do I you thought just we want do to have that under num that item nine. An executive session? I, right. But we can't do a, dis a decision on under item B. All right. Because it's well, discussion item only. So, but we can under number nine, right? For future agendas. For yeah. future agendas. So we'll do it there. <coughs> just don't let me forget. Okay. So. All right, back to uh, the <coughs> bandstand renovation group, Franklin LZ Memorial Bandstand Painting. Item C, is this going to Steve too? Thank you for coming. Thank you. 
Uh -huh. I, the we've been given the uh, painting by the bandstand committee, as I understand it. Is that right, Misty? Yes. And um, they've asked us to display it here in the building. Uh, we have a policy, which I kind of went over for you. Uh, we've been offered a lot of things to put up in this building. It's always with the condition that at some point in time, we have the right to re remove it or re relocate it or remove it. And so I wanted them to understand that. I want you to understand that as part of the motion, that would be the issue. We have denied things in the past. I don't know if that's an issue here for you or not, but I, I felt comfortable with this being in the, it does kind of blend into the overall uh, design of the building. It's got the right colors and schemes and uh, eventually I assume we can move it to another location or right. put it into a cycle of moving in and out of certain locations in the building. Uh, that doesn't have to be a permanent. I, I just want you to know that that's the way our policy reads. That's the way the people should understand that we'll deal with it if, um, if we accept the donation. So the, hold on, I gotta get my agenda to the right thing here. Do, do, do. Uh, where am I here? Ah, uh, renovation. Okay, motion. Oh, would you read the motion, please? The City Council motion 18-8-1-1, accepting, accepting a donation of a painting from the Franklin LC Bandstand Committee. Okay, and do I have a, does someone want to move to? I move to approve motion 18-8-1-1. Okay, second. And I have a second. Okay, now we can discuss it more. Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think your um, memo was very clear for everybody listening. We are agreeing to put it up in City Hall now, but it could end up in the library or could end up somewhere else down the road depending on wh what seems appropriate at the time. And uh, just so uh, people understand that. Does that sound like a synopsis of that, that would be very a short synopsis? Okay. Um, any other discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4-0. Okay, thank you. And thank you to the committee for offering it. Discussion decision on agreement with Wisconsin Economic Development Corp for the Lake Mills Main Street program. Okay, now do we have a motion here to? City Council motion 18-8-1-2 authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement between the city of Lake Mills and Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation for the Main Street program. This is a yearly event? It's supposed to be a yearly event. They haven't been real diligent on sending out their contracts. Um, okay. So I, I haven't seen one, uh, and I know for at least three years. Okay. Uh, I think so at that time- we're getting caught up I don't, here. It, it, I don't know that um, I don't know that we've always brought it up to the council to sign them either. Mm -hmm. I think I may have just signed them and sent them back in. Okay. Um, but I know we did one when it was the Department of Com I think we did one or two when it was the Department of Commerce and we brought it up. Um, but um, that's been quite a while ago. There are no changes. Nothing is different about um, the agreement as such from the past ones? The past ones were much more, um, they asked you to follow the Main Street program rules and um, they pretty much asked the city to guarantee funding. Um, beyond, at a certain what level. We're, beyond what we give? No, no, no. Oh, okay. That was the original agreement was is that we provided a certain amount of funding, we guaranteed that, and right. that we guaranteed to follow the Main Street rules. That was pretty much it. Okay. This one now has some very specific program rules that they're telling them that they want them to comply with. Um, 
They don't even mention funding in this. I saw they do a, not. I saw an annual budget listed of $70,000. But it doesn't require the city to put that money up. The they original ones used very to say specific. the city had to put up a certain amount of funding. So it, is it the belief by the state that the Main Street program will come up with the 70000 in funding in some way, shape, or form? or And they have been. Yeah, we've, they've been mm -hmm. very good. They've been making $70,000 really? annually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've been working on it. Um, yeah, good for them. The, um, mm -hmm. I think this is kind of a statewide issue that they brought up on that type of stuff because they've listed municipalities under a certain population have to be, I think, 40, and populations over have to be 70, and we're in the 70 category. Um, it goes through about you have to meet certain Main Street requirements, and you have to uh, follow certain strategic plan issues, and it goes through, I think, five or six items that, they, that the Main Street program has to do. We really do not, um, but we're required to sign the contract. Well, it's basically to say that we support it, and that they're not they're not out there in left field without the support of the city itself. Kind I think of, it, kind of along the line of that. If they don't, that we need to kind of sit down and say, "Hey, you've mm -hmm. agreed to this. You need to comply." And that's why Steve and I are uh, uh, serve on the board. We're not voting members, we're just ad hoc members, but we're at almost every meeting and, um, you know, vice versa, they, they appreciate feedback from us and we get first-hand information on what's going on there. So it's, and, the, and by the way, there will be a new director in February because uh, Katie Otto is stepping down. So that's, they'll be in the process of working on that as well. They, they started on that? I, yeah, but I'm not part of that. We're not, yeah, they're whatever. I don't know where that is. So, but the point is, is, yeah. I was just surprised there was no money in the contract. So that's good, fine with me, just, you know. So, yes, we'll, you know. It's very diverse throughout the state. Some cities don't put in any. Mm -hmm. Um, some cities fund the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so well, the plan is to continue as we have in the past. Right. On the budget, so not any change. We're not from you know. So. Okay. Any other discussion on this item? Seeing none. I call call the roll. Please. Did I have a motion? Motion. Oh, don't I we have a motion? No. Oh, darn again. All I, right. will, I will move uh, motion. This we have. <laughs> I will move motion 18 8 1 2. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. I got excited about the last motion. So. All right. Any discussion now on the motion that we have a motion? Seeing none, call the roll. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Motion passed 4-0. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'm sure that the Main Street people, thank you too. Um, Going on to item E, the discussion decision on donation to the League of Wisconsin Municipalities for Dark Stores. Read the motion. City Council Motion 18-8-1-3, directing the city manager to make a donation on behalf of the City Council to the League of Wisconsin Municipalities Dark Stores Elimination Campaign. Okay, now do we have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Good. Now, under discussion, uh, Steve, will you explain to the public and what this is? Because we know what this <laughs> is. Um, the League of Wisconsin Municipalities has sent out a letter requesting donations from municipalities to fund a 
dark store Walgreens exemption uh, elimination campaign and um, at the last meeting you guys discussed it and asked us to put it on the agenda they have asked for $1,500 per municipality contributions so that's what the motion says they do say whatever you can give um, you guys have plenty of money in your council contingency fund so I put in $1,500 from there that I don't have to do any special budget stuff or anything um, I, I maybe? I'm not quite sure where this takes us because we know that we have the number of votes required to get it through both houses and the governor has indicated he would sign it if it passed really yes but it's not getting to the floor because the leader of the Senate and the leader of the House are not allowing it to be come before the legislature for debate. Oh, very um, interesting. From that standpoint, uh, I don't know if the campaign's designed to put enough pressure on those two um, or if it, you know, if it's to keep the support that we have and continue to build it. I'm not sure quite where it goes, but um, I do support the concept of pushing this item because it's important to municipalities. And every, you know, they've been having these committee meetings and they've been, every city is up there testifying. Now, one of those would be Scott Fitzgerald, right? Uh, he's the Senate leader. So he would be one of the people. And who's the other one? Uh, Robin Voss. Oh, I'm not familiar with Robin. Okay, so those are the two people who are keeping this from getting to the floor. Okay. They have um, formed a committee to study it, and that's, you know, so there's been a lot of testifying going on. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. But I know that, that uh, WMC came out opposed to eliminating the dark store, and so it had a hard time getting yeah, through. The leadership of the legislature. Can I ask Mike to give a layman's explanation of what this is? Because you do such a good job of it. <laughs> I mean, you did kind of sure. repeat what you said at the uh, other meeting <clears throat> you had, just for the public to understand what we're doing, what we're spending a thousand five hundred dollars on. Uh, let's see here. How do I want to explain this? So basically. Well, Steve explained why we're yeah. or where we're spending it and why we're spending yeah. it. Yeah. So what this what's happening is Walgreens has found a loophole that allows them to challenge the appraisals that are put forth against their buildings so they can challenge they can challenge it to say they should be charged no more than a store that sits there empty as far as their value. Um, so basically they aren't being charged for the value of all the products and everything that they have in their store. And what that does to us is every time, as a community, every time they get charged less taxes, that extra tax that the community would have got now has to come from the individual homeowners and other businesses so it, it basically makes your tax rate go up in essence we call it a tax shift a tax shift there you go and great they shift great their word. taxes from themselves from them to, to everybody else. everybody else in the community so if, if you read the letter it says that they've essentially shifted about eight percent of the value um They've increased the everybody else's taxes by eight percent because yeah. they've gotten their taxes reduced. Yeah, exactly. And um, yes, it, it's a it's a it's not like the levy goes down based on this. Right. The, the Still actual there, just... levy just gets shifted to do other people, and to claim that that property that they have up there is valued at a, a million dollars doesn't even cover the value of what they paid for the real estate right um, so from my standpoint they are they are scamming the system with a with a bad judicial decision based on, on uh, um, yeah and it's not just 
Walgreens that's doing this. Now that now that it's out in the open, a lot of other businesses are taking advantage of it. So it does. It shifts that burden to more to the homeowners than it will to other businesses or any other taxpayer in the community. So. And it tends to be big box stores. It's, larger. All, it's almost always big yep. box stores. Big box yep. stores, yes. Okay. So basically what this motion is saying is that we are going to spend $1,500 and put it toward trying to get this stopped. Yeah, putting, putting it towards getting the bills onto the floor onto and the actually floor. discussed and hopefully, hopefully passed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's just not fair, and uh, there's nothing we can do individually, but together we hope we can get this to stop. So, any other discussion? We have a motion and a second. Yay! Call the roll. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Thank you very much. Item F Resolution 1830, claim against the city, Lanier. Lanier, whatever. Let's see. Lanier, yeah. Uh, you need to read the title. Resolution 18 30. <laughs> Action on notice of claim and claim for damages brought by Jennifer Lynn Lanier for vehicle damage alleged to have occurred on North Main Street, Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Okay. Need a motion, and the motion on this is to deny, correct? Uh, the Are resolution is drafted to disallow the claim. To disallow, correct. right. So that's the recommendation. Vote yes, to disallow. Mm -hmm. That's the recommendation of our insurance company. Um, we face the, the next item on the agenda is a, a similar claim. They happen consecutively. Um, we've discussed them. Um, at this point, uh, the insurance company has recommended disallowance. It gives the plaintiffs or the claimants the opportunity to pursue this claim in circuit court. Um, it's right. What this does is condenses the statute of limitations for them to file the claim if they so intend to sue the city of Lake Mills. I need a motion to resolution 1830. Motion to approve. That's what I need, right? I'll so move. I second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, I, Dan just did a short explanation. Um, and I think that's really all that we need to say at this point on this. Yeah, uh, unless we want to mention, you know, that, uh, boy, how do I want to say this, Dan? You know, um, it's a matter of timing. So when the city is notified about it, if we don't take care of it expediently, then we could be held liable. What what you're talking about negligence? Um, the in the insurance inspector's investigation, um, they found that the city didn't act negligently when they were provided notice of the um, the issue of the situation that arose. The city addressed it as quickly as possible, and there was no way that this was basically foreseeable as a result of our actions, the city's actions. So this is um, from an insurance inspection or a standpoint. Um, this is protocol. This is the manner in which the claimant is provided notice that the city is not going to pay out this claim, um, and it sets it up for a court battle if they intend to pursue the claim. Any other questions? Call the vote. Mr. Fritch. Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4-0. Okay. And that moves us to item G, which is a similar item. 
Would you read it, please? Resolution 18-31, action on notice of claim and claim for damages brought by Heidi Johnson for vehicle damage alleged to have occurred on North Main Street, Lake Mills, Wisconsin. I move we adopt resolution 1831, disallowing the claim. Second. Thank you. Yeah. Basically, same, same logic that you gave on the last one? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Call the roll. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Resolution 1832, public depositories amended. Uh, read the. Resolution 18 32, designating official public depositories amended. Okay. And uh, Betsy, I guess. Would yes. you like to update us? We did receive information, but there's also been changes, and we've asked you, I've asked you to get some additional information. And uh, can you bring us up to speed? Sure. The, uh, you know, the, the resolution is done to add Wells Fargo to the list of authorized depositories for city funds. Uh, this is asked because I am looking at investing a portion of the uh, funds that we have for our bond reserve and trying to maximize the um, earnings that we can receive on those funds and staying within the regulations of the bonds. Um, we had a discussion earlier about um, information that's been out there about Wells Fargo, which is the institution we want to add. Um, there are other avenues that we could take in this investment. Um, by using Wells Fargo, however, we would avoid certain um, fees in order to have these securities held at that financial institution. So using Wells Fargo would be a more economical avenue to take. However, you, we did have the conversation about um, things that have been in the news lately um, that has been primarily on the consumer side of their business and not on the side of business that we would be dealing with. Essentially what this does is allow us to arbitrage money um, under a legal process. And mm -hmm. the advantage of using the Wells Fargo is they have an agreement with the um, management company that they provide the best interest in order to gain the best advantage um, in the arbitrage situation. And arbitrage is where we borrow money and there's a certain amount of interest we're allowed to earn on that money. And this maximizes that. Uh, historically, we've paid, you know, two and a half, three percent on it, then we've been getting like half a percent or right. three quarters of a percent. This actually gets us to the point where we may actually earn more interest than what we're paying as long as it's under certain legal conditions, mm -hmm. which they very carefully spell out and manage it as with the understanding that we would earn on money that is borrowed, we would earn substantially more money than we have been, at least not losing money. And if something happens to Wells Fargo, are we protected? Yes, we have to have that. It's the same with all our banks. We have to have that security. Mm -hmm. They have to guarantee a security. What kind of security? Well, they have a couple options. Uh, usually they use uh, FDIC for some, mm -hmm. and then they standard. put up bonds of certain types. Uh, mm -hmm. So almost all our, well, we, we, we require all our depositories to guarantee our funds at a certain level. Right. Right. So when we have deposits in excess of what the FDIC will ensure, they will place additional collateral on our accounts to make sure we have the coverage needed. So it would be a similar situation here. However, the amount that I'm initially looking at investing is not going to be above the FDIC limit for that basic coverage. We're actually required to do that by uh, our bonds. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, tax code, uh, we have to do the same thing for when we collect taxes. 
Well, and from what Betsy said is that if we go with Wells Fargo, they basically are not going to charge as much. Right. Whereas right. if we go with another company, which we can, it will cost us money. Right. How long, how many years are we looking at this being part of our depository? Well, every time that we do a borrowing, they look at how much is supposed to be in the reserve fund and then take that and add any additional we might need. So as the older bonds get paid off, the newer ones need that reserve tacked on top of it. So it's always reevaluated every time we have a new borrowing. So as long as we borrow, we're going to have to have this kind of a fund. Have we had it before? No. Now, let's, we do this by using other banks. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, like I said, we've lost money. The, the, the issue here is, is to make as much money on that as possible so that we don't lose money. Right. <laughs> we've historically lost money. We pay more interest than we're earning. Right. This is supposed to get us so that we're making oh. at least as much interest as we're paying while we hold that money in the bank. Um, there are also some ways that you can actually earn more money than what you're paying. Mm -hmm. And if it falls, these guys manage it. So they maximize all our legal funds as much as possible. And that's why it's called arbitrage. That system of managing the interest between what's borrowed and what you earn off of it is called arbitrage. Um, the uh, security is there. Um, the uh, We've been doing this, we've been talking about this for quite a while. And we this discussed, is something new because no. we because we've lost WPPI does it uh, Evansville does it there are several other places okay. that do this we have not um, and we've been talking about it and what the benefits and, and uh, of doing it and what the benefits are what what we lose you know we, we have a certain amount of money in local banks and they use that to generate additional because they're holding that and they're making money on it and then they use that to lend out money to other people. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been debating the benefits and the, and the costs of this and we basically proposed just to do the water bonds, mm -hmm. um, okay. just the, the water reserve funds to run it as an experiment. So if we decide to continue to do it, if it works out well for us, uh, we would continue to do it. We may move all our bond reserves into there. If it doesn't, then we would stop doing it. Um, but these, you know, the, the people that, well, WPPI is one of the best money managers I've ever seen, and if they're using it, mm -hmm. um, there's probably a pretty good logic behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, when Betsy came in and said, I'd like to try it on the water funds, I, I'm like, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I just think, I know I myself, I think other members of the council perhaps too, you know, just wanted to make sure we looked at it hard to make sure it was a good thing given the fact there's been problems with Wells Fargo and those problems have not had anything to do with cities at all. Right. But or the commercial end. It's we may have people in Lake Mills who are being affected by this problem and we wanted them to know that we weren't just blowing it off, that we were making sure that they weren't going to get another whammy on their city taxes because of something. So, but it sounds like it's a is well protected compared comparatively. Yeah, and right, protected my, as it should be. My mm -hmm. question is, what's our liability if, for example, this company has been accused of criminal activity? If there was some kind of, let's say, criminal activity, what's our liability? Would that be covered by the FDIC and so on? There, we're not, the, bar, the lenders and borrowers aren't responsible for their criminal liability. We, we don't have anything there. The only thing we have is, 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 you know, if they had any financial problems, but again, we're covered by FDIC and the additional bond that they have to put out. Okay. Good discussion. Thank you for bringing it to us. I, I think it is um, 
financially a good move. We'll see. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll see, we'll but see. hopefully, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Any other questions or comments for Betsy or Steve? Call the roll. We need a. We don't have a motion again. Yeah. Oh, golly <laughs> gee, how did that happen? Okay, uh, I need a motion. So moved. Second. This is for resolution 1832. Correct. Okay. Now you can call the roll. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Boy, I'm going to be known as the president who forgets to do motions. <laughs> God, AG. All right, that takes us to item nine, recommendation for future agendas, which takes us back to our other items. 6.30. So we have a recommendation for a 6.30 closed session before the next council meeting, and an item put on the agenda of the regular meeting to, how do we wanna, to approve, um, Okay, tell me. The, what? Uh, to approve our lack of loan documents. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that on the next agenda. Does anybody else have something to recommend for the future agendas? And of course, you can always do it later. It doesn't have to be tonight. So, okay, is that all right, Steve? Would we move on? Okay, good. That means, would you read number 10 for us, please? Convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Stats 19.85 sub 1 sub C compensation and performance evaluation data of employees over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercise responsibility. I need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, was that enough of the information for the closed session motion? Okay. So you may call the. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. And we will reconvene, but not reconvene here. We'll just reconvene in our closed session. And so, therefore. Hello? Oh, do I do this? No, I don't because we're not closing off the meeting. Okay, so we'll see you in two weeks, right? Two weeks.